The learning objectives of this module are to know the indications for surfactant therapy and to learn how to provide exogenous surfactant replacement therapy. Surfactant deficiency may result in respiratory distress or respiratory failure in preterm, late preterm or term infants. Indications for exogenous surfactant replacement therapy includes infants who have surfactant deficiency such as preterm infants with respiratory distress syndrome or surfactant inactivation such as infants with meconium aspiration syndrome. Surfactant may be given as either prophylactic or as rescue treatment and is delivered via the intratracheal route. Prior to administration, it is important to ensure proper placement and patency of the intratracheal tube. Transient adverse effects of surfactant administration may include bradycardia, oxygen desaturation and hypotension. Therefore, it should only be administered by those who are trained and experienced in the care, resuscitation and stabilisation of neonates. There are several different ways to deliver surfactant replacement therapy to a neonate. In the first section of this module, we will review the equipment currently being used in one of our NICUs for surfactant replacement therapy and then demonstrate a technique to deliver surfactant to an intubated mannequin. In the second section, we will demonstrate surfactant administration to a 27-week preterm male infant with surfactant deficiency secondary to respiratory distress syndrome. Remember to always follow your own institution's guidelines when providing surfactant replacement therapy. In this video, we are going to demonstrate um, surfactant administration through a catheter. Here at our institution, we use a catheter kit shown here. Uh, the catheter kit comes with a 5 French catheter to administer the surfactant through. It also comes with three different size adapters for the appropriate size ET tube that you will be using a 2.5, a 3.0, and a 3.5. For the proper setup, we have a 3.0 ET tube. If we were using that on the baby that we will be giving surfactant, the, what we do is we remove the stock adapter from the ET tube, like so. You then get the appropriate size surfactant adapter which is the 3.0. You put that where your original adapter was, and then we have the setup here where we have one port for our catheter, this one in front of my finger, and the other port would be for your manual bag or your ventilator circuit. So from here, we take our five French catheter, we remove the blue cap and this catheter goes in the smaller of the two ports which goes like that and now you are ready to administer your surfactant. Okay, now we have the baby intubated with a 3.0 ET tube being manually ventilated with the bag. So we have the stock or the adapter that comes with the ET tube currently in place. So what we will do is we will disconnect the bag. We will remove that adapter. We will take the 3.0 adapter that comes in the kit we will place that in the 3.0 endotracheal tube. Then we will take our catheter, remove the blue cap, putting that end in the smaller port, and then reconnecting our bag to the larger port. And at this point, we can resume manual ventilation, like so. So the next step is inserting the catheter to proper placement 
administering the surfactant and removing the catheter, making sure our patient is stable through the process. So here, we have to properly measure the correct depth of the catheter in the ET tube and then administer the surfactant. So here, for the purpose of the video, I will focus on inserting the catheter. And we can pretend we are still manually ventilating the baby through the whole procedure. Here, we take the catheter, stabilizing the ET tube. So here we will insert the catheter, matching up the markings on the endotracheal tube to the proper markings on the catheter. I will be matching up the 14 on the endotracheal tube. I will look, be looking for the 14 on the catheter, which will be telling me that I am at the end of the endotracheal tube. And that looks like this. I will be inserting this through the endotracheal tube, down the endotracheal tube, until my markings match up. So I have the 14 at the 14. And then you can advance about a half centimeter beyond that, ensuring that you are just that distance beyond the endotracheal tube prior to administering the surfactant. From there, we will then take our, our aliquot or our dose of surfactant. We will administer that over a period of a few seconds, ensuring that the surfactant does not come back up the tube, and if it does, we will just continue to bag the patient through that procedure. And as you finish administering the dose of surfactant, remove the catheter, and then resume normal bagging. That's the demonstration of inserting the catheter and we can also demonstrate giving both aliquots, listing the baby to the right and to the left. Okay, so here we have the baby listed on his right side or her right side. We are about to give the first aliquot. Uh, prior to administration of the first aliquot, um, things to consider uh, making sure the baby is stable, vital signs, saturation, heart rate. Um, also, after intubation, we'll, um, listen for bilateral breath sounds, making sure the tube is in proper placement as well. So, prior to administration, um, you might uh, bag at around 40 to 60 breaths a minute or bag at a normal rate. Prior to administration of the surfactant, And then after, we might bag at a little faster pace. So prior, here we're bagging at a normal rate. The baby is stable. We are listed to the right side, and we're ready to administer our first of the two aliquots. So here, I will begin advancing my catheter. Like mentioned before, this we will be matching our numbers up on the catheter to the ET tube. So I will be matching up our 14 and 14 on the ET tube, advancing at about a half centimeter beyond that. And now administering the surfactant, I'll depress the syringe, administering the surfactant at a around you want to take around 15 to 30 seconds if possible to administer the full first aliquot when you are done administering your first aliquot remove the catheter like so and then begin your bagging again at around 40 to breath 40 to 60 breaths per minute during the administration of the surfactant you might get some of the surfactant coming back up the tube um, that's when you want to continue bagging the patient through the procedure in a way making sure that that surfactant stays going down the tube, not up the tube. 
So after removal of the catheter, like mentioned before, we want to bag at around a rate of 40 to 60 breaths per minute. And while on the right side here, we would want to bag between one to two minutes, making sure our vital signs are stable. And as we come to the end of our one to two minutes, and we have no uh, remaining surfactant in the ET tube and our vital signs are stable, we will then return the baby back to his or her back or neutral position. Things to consider, um, while surfactant is being administered, like I said, the vital signs, and also after administration, try to wait minimally one hour after the administration of the surfactant, uh, one hour before you suction the patient. So once we are done administering the first aliquot on the right side and we have returned the baby to the neutral position or on his or her back, repeat the same process on the baby's left side. You may a little cry, bud. Yep. How far do we want to be down? Put them in just seven. Go ahead. Turn that off. Okay. Maybe uh, just listen, make sure. I mean, I could probably put this up now. Um, should just take a few minutes, couple of minutes. It should be taken. You're back in give 25 over 5. Mm -hmm. Nice job.
I really like Sister Factums. That's great. Response. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. 